want answers. I think I'm entitled. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. We are the Mad Men of Masculinity. Your home for healthy masculinity. We're just real men having real conversations for you. That's right. It's the boys. That's right. That's right. Hey, I am Kirk M. Samuels. And I am Jason B. Kendrick. And we are the Mad Men of Masculinity. That's right. We're just real men. Having real conversations for you. For you. For all the people that don't like us pointing into the camera, that's for you. That's for Boom. you. What you want? You want some of this? Yeah, what you want? You want some of this? No, Come and get coming. it. Come yeah. and get it. We coming. We're, we're bringing the smoke. Hey, you know what I'm saying? We're here in Colorado. You know what I'm uh-huh. saying? KLDC 1220 AM in the Mile High City and on the interwebs everywhere. Everywhere. You know what I'm saying? We're in the Mile High City up here in, in Colorado. And if you've been watching TV, if you've uh-huh. been watching sports, you've been hearing about some Colorado. That's right. You know we all up. We, you know, we all come. Man. See, I, t- I told you that weed was not a performance enhancer, but it no, seems to be working. Man. Hey, man, it's working out here. It's working out here, I'm telling you. Hey, man, JBK. What are we talking about? Man, you know what? Something's been coming a little bit more important in my life lately since I've you know turned the big 5-0. What's that? Since you became an adult? That's money, 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 man. Yes. MasterCard, Visa, Visa, American Express. You know what we talk about. I ain't got nothing against no credit cards, but <laughs> cash is the best. That's right. If you're from D.C., you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> And so, uh, so man, I think it's man, I think it's a great opportunity to talk about men and money. I think it is mad too. men and money. Oh yeah, because you know, mad men mafia, we're all about up leveling. You know what I'm saying? And guys, you know how it is. It's all about what we bring to the table. You know, nothing, nothing against the ladies, but you know, they they prefer us to have fat wallets and and, and good incomes and and all that. So we thought we you know bring in some experts and you know how we're doing this year we're bringing a lot of experts in and tonight it's all about men and what you need to know about money that's right because when men are better everybody's better everybody men are like the tide and when the tide comes in all boats rise when men are better families are better communities are better churches are better if that's your thing i mean everything workplaces are better everything is better when men are better and so we believe that man if we can empower men to level up then man, we just—I mean, we—it's like the—it's like the Nutella on the animal cracker. Mm. Just makes it good. Mm, 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 mm. Yum, yum, yum. Speaking of good, speaking of good, speaking of good, we, we got—we got, got a dude. We did. We, we brought another dude in here. We got it. If we want to talk about money, there's oh, one yeah. guy we need to talk about. We need to talk about. There's this one guy, guy right we need here. to talk to, Mr. Reed Meyer. Reed Meyer, how you doing, sir? It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So thanks for hanging out with us, knuckleheads. So just because we got you in here doesn't mean we know what we're talking about so we need to know who are you and why are you here and you know what makes you the expert on the money foundation because you know sometimes it's people think we just grab homeless people off the street Which sometimes well oh there's that one time yeah, there's that one time there was that one time yeah so, so how did you get into the you know being the financial guru that you are so i shouldn't talk about the tent the tent park <laughs> well, well i mean hey, was, man, hey, hey if you're trying to save money you know hey, living man. out of a tent that's a good way to we save bought some you money a new shirt we get you a shower <laughs> you know we had you brush your teeth and yeah. watch your hair you know let's not tell the whole story man <laughs> exactly it helps to save on rent no I, i've been uh in the financial industry 15 years i come from a corporate background i was a, a dork by trade i was a computer programmer and uh, i've got a business degree it's funny when you're in business school you think you learn everything about money and all that kind of stuff but you learn about running a company but you don't necessarily learn about personal finance right Mm so i didn't learn about money in school like most of us there there's very few states that actually teach anything about schools and unless you were won the lottery ticket and and uh, were born into a family where they talked and and knew about money and and to teach you then you didn't learn right so um, i got into this industry um, because I, well, actually, because I used to teach salsa dancing, and one of my uh, students was a, an agent of mine. But uh, salsa, the uh, got into the industry and and uh, you know l- love learning stuff. I had a you know advisor before that that never the stuff that I learned once I got in the industry was way more than I ever learned, even having a guy and uh, all that kind of stuff. So I've been doing this 15 years, nice, and uh, you know kind of fully licensed in the in in the industry and just you know. Helping folks from all, all walks of life. With all right, them. well, okay. So now that we got you here with your 15 years of experience and and knowing all about money, what are some of the key things that guys who don't have that education, like you were talking about, don't have the family, the lineage where, of wealth building, what are some of the key things, maybe you top three, top five, that you can say men need to know about to up-level themselves when it comes to the, the money game? Well, it's interesting. People think that you know finances and money is really complicated, and 
by and large, most people that I know from America, like they, you know, you need to spend less and save more, right? Um, I've met with families making, you know, dual income families making two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, and they're doing payday loans. Hmm. And I've met with single moms making fifteen hundred dollars that were putting away a hundred dollars a month. So wow. it has very little to do with how much you make. It has everything to do how much you you save and invest. So the you know it's people think that. You know, it's just sort of that awareness that, you know, so the number one thing I'd say is just awareness of where your money's going. Um, you know, people talk about budget and budget is a bad word, just like diet's a bad word. And, uh, you know, diets is a bad word because it doesn't, you know, you could have a really good diet or you could have a really, you know, crappy diet, right? Same with uh, budget. You, it's just a matter of awareness of where your money's going. So the first thing is just, um, you know, kind of some awareness about what's coming in and what's going out and where's it going. Right. A lot of people, you'd be amazed at the people that I have that are like, all right, well, I should have, you know, whether it's $300 or it's $1,500 left over at the end of the month, and then, but there's nothing in their bank account. But they're like, oh, I'm putting, you know, $500 in my savings every month. I'm like, all right, how much do you have in your savings? And they're like, 100 bucks. I'm like, all right, well, there's a hole in the bucket somewhere, right? <laughs> and uh, the other two is that the other piece is to know where you're going. And I think this is where a lot of people fall down, right, is, um, you know, if you want to buy a house or go on vacation or retire or whatever it is, if you don't know where you're going, you don't know what it's going to take to get there, it's really hard to hit a target that you, you know, that you're not, you don't know where to aim to hit that target, right? So, um, and that's a big thing. People are like, ah, I'm putting 3% and getting the company match in my 401k and I should be fine for retirement, right? And you're like, okay, I'm on, I'm on the way. But uh, most people are in for a world of hurt without sort of running the numbers, right? And there's lots of free calculators out there or people that are willing to do that for you just to kind of give you a sense of, and then you put that in your priority. Your your Because, you know, your budget's all about priorities, right? It's, they say the same thing about the government is show me where you spend your money. That's where the priorities are. Same within the personal household, right? As if it's paying the mortgage or if it's paying out for entertainment or concerts or if it's paying for retirement. If retirement, you know, is down that list because it's not instant gratification, it's just not a priority, right? So other stuff is higher priority. So those would be the two main ones is just an awareness of where stuff's going and then getting some idea of where you're headed and where that falls in your priority list. It'll make a you know world of difference for you long term. So is there a difference between personal finances and personal budget? Like the terms or just what they would mean to a person? I, mean, I think budget's a, budget is a part of the, the finance stuff. So finance would include everything from retirement and you know your mortgage and all that kind of stuff. Budget, in my mind, is just the stuff that's coming in and going out every month. Um, so it's a subset, you know, of that, but it's not, you know, it's not your whole financial fin- financial life. Nice. So, okay. So basically, the, with the three things are, you know, the the you know, spend less than you make, or or, or you know, yeah, yeah, spend less than you make. Make sure you have a plan, know where you're going, and then understand uh, uh, where it's all going, like where your money is going, and all that. So those are kind of the three things that we need to pay attention to, and those will help us to guide ourselves into you know a healthier financial position yeah and i mean there there still may be you know stuff that you got to overcome and and uh you know this at the end of the day you know you talk about cash being king right so if, if there's not enough coming in then you know there you got to solve the cash flow issue right but if you if you know where you're going and your priorities are at least you're making conscious decisions about your future and your money and so many people uh, you know the worst two words in the English language are, it's just. <laughs> oh, it's just five bucks. Oh, it's just 10 bucks. It's, I mean, people go broke, you know, with it's just five bucks or, or it's just 10 bucks. Yeah. You right. get the nickel and dime to death kind of thing. Well, yeah. I mean, like from when we were, you know, or, well, for some of us, I'll just speak for myself, right? Back in high school, you're like, all right, I'll go out to lunch. It was just five bucks. Or, you know, you go to McDonald's, it was just like five bucks. Well, now you can't get out of five, you know McDonald's without spending... 15 or 20 but if your heads you're still like oh it's just you know Mm -hmm. five or six bucks boom there's you know you do seven dollars a day that's two hundred dollars a month that's you know a lot of money after the then the you know do that compounding over time and it makes a huge difference well you shouldn't be eating mcdonald's anyway Mm. you shouldn't be eating the fast food anyway it's bad for you or drinking bad water right it's bad for you it's it's, it's bad for you it's bad for your body it's bad for your wallet Mm -hmm. yeah you know Mm -hmm. so some of the tips you know we if if we if I know what my budget is, I know what's coming in and what's going out. I have a plan of where I'm going. What would be some of the best ways to facilitate that? Or is there, is there better investments, or is there just a, a a better plan to to move towards? I know in in my upbringing, I can southern middle class military family like the the financial education was none to none basically so i'm having to learn these things as i go on and it's like to your point it's those nickel and dime things because like 
some months I'm I'm flush. I'm doing well. Then the last few months has been just this flood of money going out. And now I'm like, hmm, I need to look at those nickels and dimes. Whereas before I was like, I only work with, with folded money. I don't care about them nickels and dimes. And now I'm like, oh, could I get some pennies? I need some rolling mm-hmm. money. So what would be some of the things to look at if you kind of got those three stages, you know, the three points under lock or, or you're aware of them? And how and you want to grow that, or you want to make you know you're looking towards retirement. Like, what would be some ways to to improve that situation? Yeah, I mean, I think everything everybody's looking for that magic, uh, you know, the magic bullet, right? We're a microwave society. I want something now. I want to be skinny now. I want to do you know all the stuff that impacts our life. <clears throat> Where, you know, I want it now, right? And the problem with investing is it's an overtime thing. So it's start early and save a little bit over time makes the makes the huge difference, right? It's the um, you know even if you you know did something in crypto and you went off the charts, well now that's come back down to earth, right? So you may have those opportunities or those things that come along um, for better or for worse, but at the end of the day, it's getting disciplined around I'm paying for my future and I'm investing for my future little by little right and it's just it's not a i'm going to have it all done in three years thing right um we can get into the rule of 72 and how compound interest works but um you know it's it's a little bit repetitious over time and it's not that instant gratification thing that everybody wants but it's really tough to uh, get that out of the long term. So the lottery shouldn't be my savings plan. <laughs> well, I heard about the uh, they were talking about uh, youngins. I think it was the millennials that their top three investment or uh, retirement ideas were win a lawsuit, an inheritance, or win the lotto. Right, and none of those actually involved work. But that was a that sounds like my family tree right there. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that sounds like the people I grew up with. <laughs> <laughs> do you think uh, Do you think instant gratification is kind of a baseline as to why a lot of us get off track in terms of money and our money habits uh, absolutely right so it's it's um the other thing is you know the retirement stuff it's far out in the future so that's that's a thing and it's like all right well i don't know exactly you know most people haven't defined what that is if it's like i gotta have a million dollars saved or five million dollars saved so it's usually amorphous and not defined for most people b it's far away so it's like eh, you know it's and it's fine to have shifting priorities right like so if you suddenly want to buy a house and you need to start saving for a down payment and put retirement off you know, put it on pause for a little bit, that may be the right thing for that time period, right? But then it's like, all right, I got to put that back on the the list. So absolutely the instant gratification around, wow, I really want that you know, new snowboard or I want that new, you know, shiny car or, you know, whatever it is I want, w- whatever it is, right? And everybody's got their own thing. I always ask if people are, you know, a spender or a saver. Mm-hmm. And most people are spenders, but it's like, well, what do you like to spend money on? Some people it's, mm. you know, healthcare. Some people it's toys. Some people nice. it's, you know, everybody's got their their thing yeah their hierarchy of values and he, yeah. he said the d word he said discipline and i think after this break we're gonna have to dig into that discipline word because that's a big word for a lot of us yeah, i mean that helps us with that instant gratification so y'all uh ruminate on that for this little break right here mad men and masculine on kldc 12 20 a.m in the mile high city we'll be right back forgot to tell you we, we do four segments of 13 minutes each and then we take a little break yeah so we i normally well in the other studio i have my little timer here i just watched the little timer up here based have on to buy you a timer. some math or something like that i don't know uh well well i and we're back we're back mad men and masculinity KLDC, twelve twenty a.m. in a mile high city, and on the digital webs, everywhere, everywhere. I mean, you talking Facebook, you talking YouTube, you talking over the air, you talking podcast, anywhere you can listen to a podcast, you can find us, all those kinds of places. And today we talking about money, the big M, money, 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 the big M. Hey, I I want to dumb down the conversation if I could, because I'm good at that. I'm good at dumbing down conversations. When I hear people that, you know, that are kind of money, well, we're going to use the word money experts, money authorities, I hear, sometimes I see like, um, you know, different certifications and initials and different, you know, titles and all this other kind of stuff. Like, w- w- I mean, like I- I've heard, I hear some people might be a, oh, I'm a certified financial planner or I'm a certified this and I'm certifiable or, or I got <laughs> whatever behind my name. Like, well, what is the difference in all that in that industry? The, the, the giant alphabet soup. So, yeah. um, 
Yeah, like what does it all mean? Well, it was interesting when I got into the industry, I, like I said, I had a guy uh, before, and he wouldn't have managed my money because I didn't have enough of it. Um, but I was on the shared minutes plan, the family plan of financial services. So he managed my money because he had my parents' money, right? Mm. And uh, I didn't, he was a nice guy, you know, sent me a greeting card on my birthday. I didn't know what to ask, you know, in terms of did he have any licenses? Did he have any of those, you know, alphabet soup after his name? And, um, you know, getting in the industry, I learned that there's a, it's, it's interesting in our industry, the more licenses you have, <laughs> the more people there are to get in trouble with. And so the least you can see, you, the least you can talk about. Um, and so you got people that are addition, you know, mass market sort of financial advice that don't have any licenses whatsoever. And if they did, they'd probably lose them. Uh, and and some of that's great, right? Some of them are talking about getting out of uh, debt or budgeting or whatever. You've got people that just have like a life insurance license that's there and say, hey, I'm a financial advisor, even though they're not supposed to use that word, right? Um, you've got people that are like a stockbroker and they're saying, hey, I'm a financial advisor and you have fee-based advisors um, that are sort of saying, hey, you know, I'm, I'm an advisor. What do you think the chances of you getting the same advice from all four sets of those people are? Well, probably not. No, Almost zero, right? So, <laughs> like, you know, they're all trained to sort of say why their solution is better than everybody else's. Mm -hmm. And some people only represent one company, and their job is to, to convince you that their company is better than everybody else's in all circumstances. Well, probably that's not true either, right? So, in my mind, what you're looking for is somebody that has... You know, nobody wants to go to a partially licensed doctor like, oh, sorry, I don't do any of the inside stuff. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I mean, you want to go to somebody that has that sort of full breadth of, um, of of licenses and can do most of those solutions and that they're not sort of beholden to a company so that you're getting um, kind of advices. So, you know, CFP is probably the most common one that you mentioned specifically, certified financial planner. So those people go through a... Uh, sort of, they've got to be in the industry a certain amount of time. They've got to go through a sort of certification process. Um, I'm not a I'm not a CFP. Um, I've had some that sort of you know worked for me, and some are some are amazing. I've met some too that I wouldn't want managing my money or anywhere near my money. So you know, <laughs> be careful of initials, right? Some people are really good at passing tests and passing certifications, but they don't know really what's all sort of going on. Um, so it's, you do have to ask, you know, so I'd sort of ask, you know, if you met somebody and they're like, you're thinking about talking to them, obviously it's tough to, um, do reviews and endorsements in our industry. So like, if you know somebody that's from somebody you trust, that's great. But, you know, ask them, what licenses do you, do you have, right? What can you, what companies can you offer? What can you not offer? Right. So that's probably as much as of a telling, um, question to ask, um, is, it, you know, is like what you can't offer as much as what you can offer, right? Um, and then the other piece is like just to kind of ask what people's philosophy are, right? So mm -hmm. some in the training is right is like you know they talk about sort of buy and hold, right? Is just invest in some stuff and let it ride, and that's great advice, right? And so I'm going to manage your portfolio, but basically you're going to buy stuff from me, and we're going to let it sit there, and I don't. That means I don't have to do a whole lot of work, right? Um, and or is it like okay, if something happened in the market, that you can actually do something for me, right? Right. Some people do, some people don't. Right. That's. I mean, it's all good questions to ask. So, you know, I, other people that are have an advisor, I'm like, well, hey, ask them about these things. Like, do they do this kind of stuff or not? So that you have a sense of where the holes in their f philosophy or what are the holes in the advice they're going to give me because they're not, you know, they don't have that in their, you know, arrows in their quiver. So, right. so where do you fit into all of that? So I, uh, I've got sort of fully licensed. I can do fee-based stuff. I can do commission-based stuff. I can do life stuff. I can't do individual. Um, I can't do individual stocks and bonds, right? So some people are like, "Well, I want to buy Tesla." Okay, great. Go, you know, go, go open an E-Trade account or something like that, right? So, but I've got clients that some some people manage a portion of their own money. They're like, "I'm going to go swing for the fences and play with that money." Great. I'll manage this other money, right? Um, I've got other clients that have multiple advisors. You know, is that a great idea? Maybe I mean it's better to have sort of a, in my perspective, to kind of sort of know at least what those other advisors are doing, so we're not all investing in the same stuff, right? But, um, so you know, again, you just want to kind of at least know where the where the gaps are when you're talking to somebody. And the alphabet soup, you know, CFP is probably the most common one. That's the one that you asked about. Um, whether that's important or not is you know sort of depends on on you. I, I've been asked. I've lost a couple of clients because they asked me and I didn't have it. But by and large. Um, as long as you're clear with what you can do and not do, then, you know, as long as the, the person that you're yeah. doing is knowledgeable and 
you know, it's going to do the right thing for you. I'm a fiduciary, so, you know, I'm doing all that same stuff anyway. I just may not have the those letters behind my name, so. Nice. So what is it that you normally help you with? Is it just educating them on budget and then the, the, the D word, the discipline of, you know, having a budget and holding onto a budget and saving? Or is there, you know, just a multifaceted thing that, that you work with uh, most people? Yeah, I think, you know, most people, um, we go through a, a series of things. We talk about budgeting, cash flow, having an emergency fund. We talk about having uh, proper protection, so life insurance, long-term care, disability, all that kind of stuff. Investments, estate planning, making sure people kind of have. So we sort of talk about all those areas, including student loans. Um, and we're going to talk about all those things to kind of give you. The, but most people need help in, you know, a few of those things are not, or they're going to be focused on, I got to get out of debt first, or I got to put some money away. I got to get an emergency fund. So everybody will sort of be in a different stage. And so you, you want to sort of talk holistically, put a plan together, but then focus on, on that. But you, you talked about the discipline word, right? So sometimes for a lot of folks, just, uh, you know, if you're left to your own devices, it's easy to get off track where if you have somebody else, right? Like, it's like, we may not talk, you know, and, and you can, I've got clients I meet with every month. I've got clients I meet with like once a year, I've got clients that I call and they're like, Nope, I'm good. You got it. You know, we'll talk whenever. And so, but having that outside voice of which is like, Hey, like, are we on track? Did you do that thing we talked about? Did you pay off that credit card? Did you put that little bit away? Did you, you know, are you saving for that down payment or not? Right. Um, having that outside accountability um, sometimes is that's what it's worth you know paying for right I don't yeah. work for free or whatever well, is, is just that having that somebody that's tapping on your shoulder yeah. and being like are you so doing in a lot of ways you're like a financial coach you're just like okay let's set a goal and I'm going to hold you accountable to that goal yeah absolutely right nice. so um, and and or check in okay so did your priorities change right like I, I talked to somebody and they're like well I want to do this and in five years I'm going to like or in like two years I'm going to do this I'm like right, what are you doing today to get towards those goals nothing okay well then are those really your priorities right so that's the discussion around being clear on what you want and are you actually doing anything towards moving towards that and and if your priorities change like that's you know there's no right wrong good or bad it's just life's about choices and so it's like are you making good choices or not choices and do they match what you're saying like if you're telling me these are your priorities that's not matching your behavior there's nothing right, wrong, right, wrong, good or bad about that. But are you aware that you're doing that consciously or unconsciously? Yeah. You mentioned uh, discipline being a, a tough word for a lot of people, and I think for a lot of guys for sure. And, and accountability is another one. Those are two difficult words for just people in general, you know, especially a lot of guys. And you know, and I'm hearing three words, man, and and uh, I'm thinking, wait a minute, guys need PDA. Mm-hmm. We need priorities. We need discipline and we need accountability when it comes mm. to our money. We need money PDA. Come on, baby. Yeah, Boom. Like yeah. We can sell that bad boy. I like that right there. <laughs> well, well, the problem, too, is there's a lot of pride and embarrassment, right? Money's right. an emotional mm-hmm. thing for a lot of mm-hmm. folks. And so, you know, especially being a guy, right, is if you, you know, you're like, oh, my cousin's, you know, friend's plumber said I needed to buy gold or whatever. And you so like, we're emotional creatures. So you're like, okay. You now the dudes around the corner, they're spinning the signs for gold and you're, you know, there's all this hype and. So you're like, okay, I got to go out and buy gold. So you go out and buy gold, and when everybody's doing it, that's usually when we're at the top, right? And so then things turn around. And then, of course, as the guy, you want to be wrong, right? So things start to turn south, and you don't want to be wrong. So you're like, okay, uh, we're just going to ride this out, right? Well, well, you probably should have made other decisions. And then finally, you know, you're... Your other significant other maybe say, uh, hey, <laughs> like uh, we need to cut our losses, right? So then you end up sort of getting rid of it at what is usually the very bottom, and then things go back up again. So because we're emotional creatures and we've got that pride and, and, and um, in the whole thing, right, we, we tend to do the exact opposite of what we should do if we were unemotional about it and undisciplined about it because we've got that pride and like, okay, I'm going to do this right and I'm going to provide for the family or whatever. And you turn out to do the exact opposite, which is, you know, another reason why people get into trouble. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's the biggest issue that I think most of us have is that we make these mistakes. We know we make mistakes and then we don't want to admit it, much less to somebody like we're paying to show us our mistakes. I mean, you got to have some tough skin when it comes to, you know, having some financial discipline, especially when you didn't have it before, because it's it's going to be a lot of humble pie when I know in my experience, it's been like, I know better but I'm still doing the same dumb things with all my money. And then I'm wondering where all the money went. And I know sometimes like you were saying, situations change and things happen. You got to spend two grand to fix the car. So your uh, air conditioning works right. Or, you know, 
something happens with work and then it work slows down so now all of a sudden the money you were counting on is less and you know bills don't ever stop and so having those having those conversations and, and just being transparent even with yourself i think that's the biggest thing part of that you know priority and discipline and accountability is like with yourself do do am i where i want to be and am i willing to to make a plan to get out of where i am i'm at and i think that's the hard part because a lot of us don't want to admit that i'm not where i want to be or i think the biggest one is i don't want to say i don't know right Uh, i I mean first of all i'm thinking there's like a million conversations that we could have around money finances Mm -hmm. credit all that kind of stuff and so we this is definitely not a one-time conversation reed i mean like it or not man we got to have you back up in here man we're gonna hijack you we might we might like kidnap you up in here man just like feed you under the door every now and then man just to just to soak all the knowledge (laughs) we can get out of you man this will be the i'm all about the money pda thing (laughs) baby the priorities the discipline and accountability are you independent or do you work with a company? So I officially work for um, you know, a company for compliance reasons. I won't sort of mention them, but mm-hmm. so but we're independent. We represent like 150 different companies. Uh, so not everybody, but uh, you know almost everybody that you've you've heard of. And uh, you, you know there's pros and cons again. If somebody's not independent, they're called sort of captive. They just represent one company, um, and I think that just leads to you know no company is the right answer for everybody in every situation. So either you got to trust that that person's going to tell you, hey, you should go talk to somebody else uh, for this particular thing, or, um, you know, or like I'm not a good fit for you, or like, you know, they're just going to try to fit you into what, you know, what might be closest to you in their limited view, right? Yeah. I've been to some of those pitches. It felt like I was at a um, timeshare meeting where it was like, um, are, are, am I are, am I here to buy a timeshare or am I here to talk about money? Because sometimes some of those pitches, I'm like, wow, I don't, I'm, my skin's crawling. I want to get out of here. They can swing pretty quick into a, yeah. to an, the answer, right? Yeah. And uh, you know, there, there's not, from my experience, there's not one answer, right? There are multiple avenues to get there, but a lot of it comes down to the PDA. Yeah. Is you know more more than the the, the tool. They, they they sort of talk about the analogy of like uh, you guys are golfers, so mm-hmm. you know the. What's more important, the golf swing or the golf clubs? Hmm. You no, know, the swing. It's got to be the swing. Right, it's got to be the swing, right? So, like, you know, if you give a great golfer, you give him a you know a set of crappy clubs, he's still going to play good golf, right? Mm-hmm. But if you give a you know really crappy golfer some great clubs, it's not going to make a difference, right? right? So the clubs are the the products that come around. There's some stuff that's out there now that's that are crazy good that weren't around two years ago. Well, right. you know, Reed, I do have a hole-in-one, by the way. Right. Um, last year, I got Okay, we're going to take a break right now. Yeah. We don't need to hear about his hole-in-one <laughs> one more time. So, uh, Mad Men and Mad Healing here on KLDC. We'll be right back. You don't like my hole-in-one story, huh? I think it was just a perfect segue to the uh, break. That's where, 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 yeah. where I was. Yeah. Can knew you check you your would. phone? I think it was vibrating or beeping or something. Make sure the volume's all off. Because uh, I may get picked up. I knew you would exit left off of my. <laughs> off of my you ain't know nothing. Story. You ain't know nothing. Nah, I know you well. I knew you was gonna be like, all right, we uh, don't get out of here on that one. Where'd you get your hole in one? Family, Family sports. <clears throat> the shortest par three. Hey ever. man, <laughs> do you have a hole in one? Everybody, everybody try to call it the shortest. No, yeah, it was seventy yards. It, it's always, it's always a par. I mean, unless you're like, when are you gonna get a hole in one if it ain't a par three? That's maybe they're a always par threes right. unless you like Tiger Woods and you hit like three fifty on it or yeah, something, I mean, but. Got my hole in one. That's all I know, and I got witnesses. Man, it was it was crazy because he hit it like nowhere near the hole. It looked like it was going to go. It hit the rake and go into bunker. It bounced nah. over the rake, hit the slope. Boop, boop. And I was just like, come on, man. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll take, take it. it. Take Somebody's dog, living right. right. Somebody's living right for the rest of my life. Your boys are back. We're back. We are the Mad Men of Masculinity. We are on KLDC. We are on 1220 AM. We are in the Mile High City. Wherever you can find us, you found us. And we are here. We talking about money. Money, money, we money. We talking about money, PDA. See, they say men don't like PDA. I love PDA. You know, I love me some PDA. Oh, mm-hmm. you give me some good old PDA. Mm, I love, you know what I'm saying? That's just me. I just like biscuits and gravy. I just sop it up. Mm-hmm. I like that PDA. We talking about money. We talking about priorities. We talking about discipline. We talking about accountability. We talking to our man, the one and only Mr. Reed Meyer. Um, who 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 is our money guru? He's our money PDA guy. We might have some PDA in the studio if we get our money right. Oh man, yeah. nah, we don't roll like that. We boys, but we boys with boundaries. Right, you know what I'm saying? We gonna we gonna put that right over here. We, we can rent some PDA with money. I'm telling yeah, you what, we, we can gonna do that man, kind of thing. <laughs> men with men with money. I mean, I, I mean, this is you're a man, right? So 
What's your philosophy, Reed, on on the importance of men having a good grasp on their on their money, on their finances, on the 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 cashola, on all that kind of stuff? What's your philosophy on that? And you're a family man, I mean, you're a dad, all that kind of stuff. Well, it's interesting when I was growing up. Uh, you know, my dad handled all of that uh, kind of stuff, and and that generation, my mom, you know, really didn't have anything to do. You know, he, he did the checkbook and he did all that kind of stuff, right? And somewhere along the line, he he had the dawn on him that. Uh, you know, he had, to, he had to teach her how to do those in case he wasn't around someday that, you know, she would know how to do all that kind of stuff and kind of turned a lot of that over. And now it's interesting in, in the world we live in today. I mean, I meet with couples where they manage their money together. I meet with couples that manage it separately but have a joint account. Like, there's a lot of different ways to make that happen. But, um, you know, I think, and, and women now are, you know, tend to be more educated, right? They're, you know, they're the primary breadwinner in, fit, you know, over 50% of the houses or something mm-hmm. like that today. So they are becoming more and more of that thing right so again you like so do you want to just be the spender in the family that's just you know like have to you know do that so you got to provide right you got to make sure that you're covering your stuff and contributing to the family but are you having those conversations right so yeah whether you're the sole bre- breadwinner or you're 50 50 whatever that arrangement is you, you got to talk about it right one of the things that money tends to be a taboo topic mm. which i don't think serves anybody right like you know the the more it's, you know, more people avoid it, the less people know. And um, where if we talked about it a lot and and it's just like, you know, I can't tell how much I, I, I make or if I've got debt or all that kind of stuff. If people actually talk to that stuff and we're had conversations about it, especially with their spouse, then you can work together on it. Again, it goes back to that whole, am I doing things consciously and we're, are we working together and kind of rowing in the same direction? Or are we, am I kind of hiding stuff from my spouse because I'm, you know, I've got some pride stuff or I've got debt that I'm worried oh. about or I'm embarrassed about embarrassed about what I know or I'm embarrassed what I don't know all that stuff gets you into trouble right because you're just sticking your head in the sand and so having that conversation with you know yourself like you said Jason right is like okay like am I being objective reality around where you know where am I and where am I going and 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 my true self and and then am I having that conversation with whoever my you know partner or spouse is right is to make sure that we're on the same page yeah I mean you're talking conversations we talk about so much because I mean this show does a lot on relationships I mean we just did a whole week on you know women and and, and guys and, and fixing your relationships but the communication piece that having that clear open communication and I, cause I've, I've heard horror stories of people getting together and they never had those conversations and they find out after they were together and they're trying to combine things like oh he has all this debt or she does or you find out she's a spender or you know a hoarder or, you know these different things so having some transparency and that's where like having that pda having that you know the purpose the discipline the accountability and, and the priorities and knowing where you're going so that you can have an educated conversation like here's where i'm at here's where i want to go and so many times we don't do that until it's you know it's like rock bottom we're we're about we're about to die financially as a couple and now oh maybe we should talk about money or maybe we should bring some help in it's like we always say the best time to get a counselor or, or get some help is before you have the problem so like i i, I love that you say communication because a lot of times that's that's a hard thing for people to want to have a and of course i think you know to your point too with the, the ladies they're not really afraid of asking for help and i think sometimes for those guys because we still have that manly i gotta do it all on my own and uh, you know i can't ask for no help that's how we end up getting into these situations where we don't know what we're doing yep i i, I think i've heard that like divorce i think one of the number one reasons for divorce i don't know if it's not the top one it's in the top couple right is is, is financial issues right oh, money yeah. issues and it comes down to that, you know, I'm sure it comes down to that communication, a little bit of that provider stuff and expectation, you know, it's expectations and unmet expectations, but a lot of just not be on the same page. And we're all about here having conversations publicly that most people don't like to talk about. <laughs> I mean, you know, in that dirty about, laundry. just talking about stuff, you know, we talk about stuff that most people don't like to openly, especially most men oh. don't like to talk about, or, or we don't hear men openly talking about this stuff, things that are considered kind of culturally taboo in a way. And, and I think, you know, man, to be able to talk about that and communicate about that up front is, is huge. And it, I mean, if you can talk about money and debt and all that kind of stuff, you can pretty much talk about anything really and 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 i think you know it it sets the stage for transparency it sets the stage for vulnerability which sets the stage for intimacy and all that kind of stuff you're not gonna especially if you're single you're not gonna meet somebody that's 40 50 years old that's got like no junk in the trunk 
Mm-hmm. I mean, whether it's child support, whether receiving or paying, uh, whether it's you know spousal support or maintenance, alimony, whatever you want to call it, whether it's student loan debt, whether it's credit card debt, whatever it is, like you know, you're probably not going to meet somebody that doesn't have something. You know, in there, in the mix of who they are, that it's like, okay, if we get together, this is going to be something that that we need to contend with. So these are conversations that we got yeah, to have. And, and, and gentlemen, you know how it is nowadays. These ladies don't play. Mm-mm. I mean, they want to know your, they want your ten years financial yeah. records mm-hmm. and your resume. They don't play. So you better be educated yeah. when you get out on those dates. Mm-hmm. Well, well, the other piece of that is we've all been on our own money journey. We all have our own money programming that runs in our head from that we got from our parents mm-hmm. and or our grandparents, right? Like. Um, You know, if they saved every penny and they were, you know, tight with money, then you're probably one of two things, right? You're either a saver like them or you're like, I don't want to be constricted. Like, I don't want to feel like I've got to go out and and have a, you know, great life. And so you, two different directions. But that comes from that money programming that we all get when we're kids and from our family. So even if they don't have the debt and all the kind of stuff that you talked about, you're bringing two totally different backgrounds and money programming together right Uh, that's like it's like weddings right they bring together like Mm -hmm. money issues and religion and family stuff like you know Mm -hmm. like traditions have you ever thought about being a financial couples counselor (laughs) it might be a whole new niche for you well it's interesting because like in the old days right they only a lot of advisors lots of horror stories they just talk to the husband like Mm -hmm. all the time right and i always insist like if we're you know even if there's in every relationship there's always usually one person that's sort of the main primary financial person Mm -hmm. um that's just more money inclined or whatever totally fine but i want to make sure both people are there so that when we're talking about because it comes down to that priorities if their priorities aren't on the same page or they're not sort of talking off the same sheet of music so yeah a lot of my a lot of that accountability or whatever it also comes down to counseling and making sure everybody's on the same page as the same sort of education same knowing why why you're doing something versus oh yeah i'll just fill them in later right and then it happens like oh yeah well i make all the decisions and you're like okay here's what we're gonna do and they're like yeah let me check with my spouse. Yeah, I bet you could save a lot of yeah, marriages if they could, had the same, same kind of financial yeah. vocabulary. Because, I mean, if money's the number one thing and the bedroom's the second, and I don't even know what the third is, but if those are the top two things, if you don't have that common vocabulary, the common language, how can you even communicate about something so important as your finances in a relationship? Yeah, I mean, you, like, I think that's a great way of saying it, is the vocabulary around, like, okay, so let's talk about priorities. Let's talk about are we putting away this much or are we disciplined or like do our priorities change and um, you're right it, it provides that vocabulary that's a great way to say it man I think we got something with this PDA I think, thing, I think we do I think we got something man hashtag write that down write hashtag that down. money PDA Man, man, masculinity. You heard it here. We are, we are, we gonna work this thing like for yeah. real. I mean, going. We, that's our. That's gonna be our money thing going future, going forward. Future priorities, discipline, accountability, men and money. Mm-hmm. We can work this thing. Man. I'm telling you, man. Out. We can work this thing big time because I mean, I think you know those are huge things that that men contend with in terms of. In, in terms of, you know, in terms of money. And I think, man, we can change some paradigms with that if we just talk about this stuff yeah. and, and get help where we need to get help and reach out to guys like you, Reed, and reach out to, I mean, man, you could you could solve some relationship issues. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can, you can prevent some relationship issues. I mean, if, if you're single, what a better time to kind of get a hold of your finances. And, and so when you meet that person, you know, first of all, you know where you are and you know what you have to offer. You know, you, you know where you fall on the paradigm. Yeah, you know what lane you're in. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say you guys are talking about what lane you're yeah, in. You know what lane one of those things, in. right? Because yeah. you're going to be on the financial Well, and it's great, too, because most men understand priorities. They understand discipline. They understand accountability. The problem is I think we understand those at work or we understand right. those in some other fashion. We haven't applied those to our money game. I think that's where we need to make that shift. We need to have some help and not be afraid of asking for help and saying, hey, help me get this. PDA with the money. Help me get my priority straight. Help me get that my discipline in line. Help me get with the accountability. And that's the hard part sometimes. I know for me, having accountability and accepting it and not being like, I don't want to upset them or I don't want you know, I don't want them to know what I just did and, and screw in the pooch. So now I'm going to hide it from them. But uh, and what you just said is exactly why every sport has coaches. Mm-hmm. You know, every sport, there's a coach. You might even have trainers and people in the background. But every, I mean, you know, even if you're an independent, if you're a, a golfer, you know, you have, I mean, first of all, you have a caddy with you. But then, you you know, Tiger Woods, has, all these guys have golf coaches, you know, and these guys are at the top of their field. And so you name it, whether it's a team sport or an independent sport. And, and I think, you know, maybe if we look at money like a sport, you know, like how can I master this thing? Thing to the best of my ability. If you only make thirty thousand dollars a year, master that thirty thousand dollars a year. If you make 
you know, three hundred thousand dollars a year, you better master that three hundred thousand dollars a year, or you're gonna find a way to blow it. Well, shoot, I mean, to that point, you know, they don't even have one coach. They got yeah. their caddy, they got mm-hmm. a swing coach, a physical coach, a physical trainer. They got a dietitian. They got probably a, a business, you know, manager and and. Uh, uh, What's what's what was Jerry Maguire in that movie? Or yeah, he's the agent. The agent, agent you know, they got all they got all these people. So it's time for y'all to get some people. And for us, we got to get take we a break so we can find our people. Yeah. Boom, Mad Men and Masculinity on KLDC twelve twenty AM in the Mile High City. We'll be right back. I've got a, I've got a thought on that on on uh, energy, right? Like it's uh, it, you know, money's emotional. That's why you don't get a coach, right? It's yeah. like. <laughs> That's why you need a coach because you're emotional about your own money. You're not mm-hmm. emotional about somebody else's money. Right. Yeah. Well, I heard I was at, I was at my Course in Miracles class uh, mm-hmm. yesterday, and one of, one of the shifts that he was talking about was like, I don't pay for anything anymore. I give. Mm-hmm. And that's part of that kind of energy mindset. It was like, because when you're like, oh, I got to pay, it's this lack mentality. It's like, so, like, so I give this much so I can stay indoors. And then you even go beyond that and think, I'm giving this so I can help my landlord with their bills. I'm giving mm-hmm. this to, you know, to buy this so that I can help those people with their job and, and just having that shift. And I know for a lot of time, for a lot of us, it's just that mental shift that yeah. if we can make the mental shift and it, it helps in all areas. Well, well, money means stress for most people, right? Oh, it's yeah. Like, you know. So turning it around and trying to make it positive. We probably should talk about this on air. Shoot. This is segment four, right? Yep. Boom. All right. Mad Men and Masculinity. KLDC, 1220 AM. Man, that was a nice old radio. You, you, you like that? You, you, you like, is that your like radio that. voice? My, yeah, I'm going to do like movie, the movie intro. Oh, you do the movie guy? You know, in, in a, a world. world. In a world okay. where your money controls your PDA, <laughs> get a hold of your priorities, your discipline, and your accountability. Because Ooh. it's emotional. It is emotional. We yeah, were we just were talking just, about this. We were just talking about off the break, and uh, Reed had a great point, because the reason we don't get coaches is because... Money's emotional. Let's talk about that. Dig into that, Reed. What were you talking about? Well, I was just gonna say that you know, like you're emotional, especially about your own money, right? So, like, if you if you lose, you darn right, I'm emotional about my money. If 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 you lose five hundred bucks, you lose a hundred bucks, or whatever it is, it, like, you're pissed off. You're emotional about mm-hmm. it, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Well, if somebody else, you know, so like when you are managing your own money, again, we make decisions like we were talking about before with that gold example, right? Is we make the opposite decision where if somebody else outside in, they're less emotional about your money and can kind of help you to like, you know, talk you off the ledge and sort of talk to you about why you're making the decision because they're not as emotional about your money, but you are very emotional about your money, right? So that's yeah. sometimes that helps just to have the coach, right? And Show me the money! <laughs> hey, real quick, investing, right? So I'm, I'm a, while I got you here, uh, I, I want to pick your brain. I have a son. You have sons, so you get this, right? So we're talking advice even to the next generation. I want to get my son to invest. He's 20, He just turned 20 like yesterday, right, two days ago. I want to get him to invest 100 bucks a month at this age. Why would that be important to him? Well, it'll probably be worth, you know, millions or multiple millions of dollars when it's time for retirement. Mm, why is that? It's only hundred bucks a month. Come on, man. For it's, real, read. It's it's the compound, right? It's the it's the eighth wonder of the world. Albert Einstein called it the eighth wonder of the world. Compound interest, right? Oh. So your money makes interest, and then all of that money makes interest, and then all of that money makes interest, and over time it makes a huge difference. That's why it's a slow game. It's not a Garrett's quick thing because you got to have that money to work as hard for you as you work for the money. It's the long game. I'm trying and to teach my so, son, it's about the long so, game. So the best thing you do, right? There's calculators out there on the um, on the interwebs, right? Um, happy to run numbers but it, you show him what that hundred dollars can be in 40 years or in 50 years and what a difference will make and the, it's amazing like if you start there's a um you know one of the examples that we have in in kind of one of the, the books we talk about is somebody that invests for like you know 15 years and then they stop and then somebody else starts and they go all the way until they're like 35 the person that started early and just let the money cook they actually have more money Right. And it's because they started early and just have that time for that compounding to go. But you show, I mean, that's when you teach the 20 year olds, right? That's why we need to teach this stuff in K through 12 education is pounded into the heads, which is like, okay, show them what that could be worth in the future. Just doing a hundred dollars a month. It's amazing. Yeah. And it's sad. I mean, you bring it up with education, why the things we need in adulthood are not taught. I mean, they used to teach some things in, in school, you know, there was auto shop and cooking and things like that. 
you know, home ec, whatever it was. But I, I, it was rare to see any sort of financial education in high school or in, in any schooling. And maybe when you became a business, you know, went to you know, a master's degree in business like that, but or probably not until you actually became like went to the, your financial planning class or whatever, right? Yeah. So, like, they, I think there's only seven states or about that that require any K through 12 sort of financial education. Like a, like, a, like a standalone course. There's like about half the states now have, um, it requires some financial education, but it's again part of another course. You might have it as part of economics, and so you learn how to balance your checkbook or to do a budget, but that doesn't necessarily help you figure out you know, all the other stuff that you're going to need is, you know, <laughs> how to avoid credit card debt, mm-hmm. how to, you know, all those those practical things that we use the entire rest of our life. Yeah, that yeah, might, I mean, might, might, might be useful to include in the curriculum. Yeah, I, I wish they would, because I know in in my experience, it was like, I I think because my dad was busy with his stuff, he thought I was going to get that education somewhere else. And I, I basically just learned the hard way, beat my head against the wall, because school about credit cards, like trial and error. as soon as I got out of basic training and got mm-hmm. off the bus at, at tech school, there was somebody at the in, on, with a with a table in, in front of the BX going, mm-hmm. Here, get a credit card. Buy your stuff. You know, nice stuff. And it took me I don't know how many years to pay that off with my meager airman's uh, earnings and stuff. But I mean, those are things we I didn't know. I learned the hard way by doing it the wrong way. So, what's the rule of sevens? So the rule it's called the rule seventy two. Seventy two. I'm sorry. So the rule seventy two says how long it takes your money to double. It's a short little. It's not exact, but it's a mathematical shortcut. So. Let's say the banks were paying you 1%, which is a lot of banks are paying now on like your savings account. A year ago, they were paying a lot less, right? So at 1%, you divide 72 by 1, it's going to take you 72 years to turn your $100 into $200 just letting it sit there in the bank. Woohoo! Right? Super excited that, about that, running out and saving I was saving about that. to say, is that years or months? Mm-hmm. But so years, like a wow. year and a half ago, the bigger the bank, usually the smaller the interest, right? So they were paying 0.01% on savings accounts. It was going to take you 7000 Two hundred years to turn your hundred dollars into two hundred dollars sitting there in the bank, right? Yeah, and, and we, isn't inflation like normally like three or four percent, and they're not even allowing you to save equal to inflation. It, it used to be too. Yeah, most banks are now paying. I mean, they've gone up a little bit um, since, especially since the bank stuff. We've got some online stuff that's like paying four point three seven or something like that. But most banks are paying one, mm-hmm. maybe two. So just setting it on the bank, and if inflation this last year has been like seven, mm-hmm. so your money's sitting there making two, and you're paying. So seven you're losing more. Money. You are losing money having wow. the money just sit there in the bank not working for you, right? That makes me sad, man. Makes me angry. But if you don't know, but if you don't know, you, you, don't, you don't know, know yeah. right? So if you don't know what you don't know, yeah, well, that's that's the problem, right? Is because we don't talk about it and it's not sort of known. Yeah. So it's seventy-two years to double my money. But what do I? I mean, what's, what's so if, the solution? So, so, if you're, so if you're making ten percent, right, which is the long-term historical in like the stock market, right, and bonds are different and real estate is different, or whatever. But the long-term average, right, is about ten percent. So that means your money would double every seven point two years. So in you know then you're looking over a lifetime and how many of those seven years do you have? How many can you double? Right. So like somebody's nineteen, you know, you have a twenty year old, right? If you have a nineteen year old, they're making one percent on their money. It's not going to even double once by the time they're age sixty seven. If they can get nine percent on their money, it's going to double every eight years by the rule of seventy two, right? Seventy two divided by nine every eight years. That's going to be worth six hundred and forty thousand dollars. That same one time investment of ten grand. Mm. If you could get one or two percentage points more, it'd be in the millions. But if that person that's 19 doesn't know how important that interest rate is, where to go find higher paying interest rates. And if they can't get somebody to work with them because they're 19 and they only have 10 grand, right? Like most people in the industry, the minimums keep going up. Most people in the industry don't care about you unless you have 250 grand mm-hmm. to invest. So if they can't go find somebody to work with to teach them where to go invest and put it away for the long term, it's going to make a dramatic, dramatic impact on their future. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to throw myself under the bus here. So if I'm in my 40s and have little to nothing saved except for like a 401k or whatever, what would be some steps to take to at least try to soften the blow if I re- if I even plan to try to retire at 75? <laughs> because it's not going to happen at 65 at this point. Yeah, I mean, I think that the, you know, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The next best time is today, right? right. So um, all you can do is all you can do is start to, you know, start to put some money away now. Um, and some people say, all right, well, I got to be super aggressive and I got to go, you know, and, and get sort of, um, you know, maximum returns, take maximum risk because I've waited so long. Right. And that can be a trap in and of itself. Right. right? Is I got to um, but it's it's much better just to go and be, again, disciplined. Right. Set your priorities and then be accountable for starting to put away what you need to you need to put away. Right. And as those, uh, you know, as you get smarter and you're focused more on your priorities, then. You know, money will shift, right? Money I was spending on, 
you know, as I'm getting older, whatever, maybe I'm not going to as many concerts. All right, well, maybe I can put that away, right? Or those sort of things. As you're as you're clearing your priorities, you'll shift stuff around in your life to kind of put more away, and you know, you can kind of get there, right? But uh, definitely, the best time to start is is now. If you're embarrassed right. that you didn't start 20 years ago, right? Right. And the easiest place to start, if you have like a company that offers it, would you say is a 401k? Obviously, you're not giving people financial advice. Let's clear yeah. that up. But well, and it, I mean, there's. Uh, Yes. So uh, the 401k is a great place. And that's where most people have most of their savings. And, uh, you know, you can't really, if the company's matching, right, you can't really beat free money. Right. right? That's money. And I hear people that are like, oh, I should have started five years ago because the company matches. And it's like, well, yeah, you should have because, you know, like, um, you know, you can't, you can't beat free money. So definitely take advantage of that. The question is, you know, what there may be other places that may be better. Um, after that next incremental dollar, after you've sort of maxed out your your match, but um, definitely, we we don't want to give up free money, so you definitely always start there, and we definitely want to start with an emergency fund, right? Is that something that people overlook? They're like, well, I gotta pay down my debt. I was working on this couple right now. Is like they they're like, I gotta pay down my debt. Well, I'm like, well, let's get some. But what they talked about when they when we met them is they wanted peace around money. They wanted uh, they you know they didn't want the stress. Like to to them, money meant stress and bills and. And it was like they just, you know, we're so tightly wound, right? I'm like, all right, well, we need to start saving. We need to pay down the debt, uh, yes. But we need to start saving a little bit and getting in the habit of saving, right? So 20 bucks a month, 50 bucks a month, whatever, put it away. Because if you have that cushion, that emergency fund of, you know, whatever it is for, for you, right? Three months or a couple months or if you've got a thousand bucks there or whatever. If the tire, you know, you need new tires on the car, right? That's something we all forget about. And it comes around every, you know, four or five years. Yep. If you don't have that money there, then you're reaching into more debt or you're pulling out of your retirement fund or you're changing your priorities. Where if you start to save and get in that habit, having that peace of mind changes your relationship to money. We were talking about that a little bit around energetically, right? So if you have some of that. So I told them, I'm like, the first thing to do is we need to start getting you an emergency fund because then you're going to feel better about money. You're not going to feel so broke. And the world will start to shift because that's your world viewpoint, right? So. You know, definitely take advantage of the 401k, and you know the emergency fund has got to be on the well, top of that you, list. Well, you mentioned something before I wanted to see. I don't even know if you can talk about it, but where are some of the things like that have the higher interest rates that we can put money in since the, most of the banks that we use have one or less than 1% interest? What are some of the online things you were talking about that we could look into? So, um, yeah, and I can't, uh, I won't name names, but the uh, definitely look around. It's definitely worth looking around, right? Is uh, especially for those emergency funds or whatever. Typically, the smaller banks, credit unions, they're still insured, and um, you know, the bigger the bank, in my, from my experience, the bigger the bank, the smaller the interest. So, right. smaller so banks small and banks. credit credit unions, um, and there's been a, a big evolution in. Um, uh, there's a lot of online investment platforms and online banks that don't have the brick and mortar or whatever that are offering um, you know free check and savings accounts that are paying higher interest rates um, that are that are insured and um, are paying a lot higher things they, they want you to you know open other investments with them so they're you know as opposed, as opposed to giving you a free toaster for opening up your, your your checking account like the old days right they're offering you a higher interest rates to get your attention. So it's, it's definitely worth looking around. And I'll, I'll ask a question because I know somebody's going to be thinking it. Are those online institutions just as safe as the brick and mortar ones? So I would definitely make sure that you're talking to a repu- reputable one that, uh, and like, look what their insurance policies and all that kind of stuff are. So you definitely want to do your, your homework. Um, but yeah, there are definitely ones that are insured or that participate in the, you know, the FDIC insur- you know, account insurance, the bank debacle that happened last month or whatever. There's definitely... Uh, ones that participate in that and your money is uh, you know safe and it's just they're saving overhead because they don't have a bunch of branches everywhere right right so I think you know ultimately men whether you make more or not or men need to lead the conversation the PDA mm-hmm. conversation I think men need to take lead in the PDA the money PDA and and, and, and be vulnerable about you right. know, their situation right to be open authentic and conversations right? and I think a great way to begin that conversation is to get a hold of Reed Meyer yeah. that's just my opinion you can say what you want. That's my opinion. That's one man's opinion. You don't have to agree, but hey, I agree. That's hey, what I I'm, think. That's I'm saying. In a conversation like that, no especially doubt. if you're not used to having those conversations, you want an no intermediary. You yeah. want you want you know a, const- a consigliere. Is that how you say it? consigliere? Consigliere, consigliere that that, yeah. that will be your intermediary that will help you one. so that she doesn't walk out of there with your head in her in her purse. Something like so that. So maybe somebody like Reed can can ease that conversation a little bit, give you some pointers. What do you think, Reed? So super quick, Reed. How people get a hold of you? 
Well, I, uh, yeah, the, the, the website is howmoneyworks.com slash Reed Meyer. That's R-E-E-D Meyer, M-E-Y-E-R, howmoneyworks.com. There's a lot of great information out there about the Rule 72. There's some videos, a money quiz, um, and on there you can set an appointment with me right on my calendar, and it has my other contact information there. And so. then you meet with people, you sit down, and you just kind of start from scratch and go from there? I start with figuring out what your goals are, right? What What's your situation, figuring out where your point A is and where you want to be in, in point B, and we go from there. And I don't uh, charge for sitting down and having that conversation, right? Nice. That's that's even better. That's free talk right that's there, baby. Better. That's free game. That's what they call it, free game on the streets. That's yeah. what I'm... Well, shoot, man. We, we, man, I'm telling you, man, we got it. We, we got it, man. We, yeah. There's so many things we can talk about, man. We can talk about credit. We can talk about investment. We can talk about insurance. We can talk about all kinds of stuff, man. We got to do this again. Happy, happy to do it. You guys are uh, great. Happy to help out. And uh, again, I think it's one of those things that if we talk about more, right? More people yeah. will be just able to have the conversation and that's that'll make a world difference well shoot i mean th- this was the, the free and easy one next time you come in here we're gonna grill you Ooh. we're gonna get into it because you know we don't know what we don't know and yeah. most people out there don't know what they don't know and they're mm-hmm. afraid to ask so that's why we're here yeah. we're here to educate you we're here to give you those little nuggets that you didn't even know you didn't know and we bring in people like mr reed here who has those answers well sometimes when you think you know the answer is just hearing a couple of things that you don't know at least opens the door to like okay maybe i don't know everything that i think i know yeah that's a good point because a little bit of information is more dangerous than a lot of information because you can be you know somewhat trained but not fully trained you're not a master yet and you're more dangerous than the master but anyway so as we master this program as we master your hands on that dial make sure to tune in to mad men of masculinity kodc 1220 a.m the mile high city saturday mornings at 8 a.m wednesdays at 6